How you guys doing today? It's uh, Bill Applegate here. We're going to do a lesson on Night Tunisia. It's a very fun tune to play and very challenging. Uh, I'm going to, it lays better to teach the head first because there's a little break before the solo. So I'm going to do the, the melody first, then the solo, then the comping. Uh, the form on this is A A B A with an interlude. The, um, most often the A section is done with a Latin feel except for the last two bars which are swung and then uh, the B section is usually a swing. Uh, the solos are sometimes done all swing or just like the form of the uh, melody. So I did it that way. I did it with the I did the solo with having the Latin and the swing mixed. I, I, I kinda like doing that. Okay so I'm gonna do the head first uh, solo and then comp so let's go ahead and move on with the head <laughs> Okay, the little intro that uh, Charlie Parker would have played. Uh, it's real nice over those two chords there. If you're not playing the head during this, uh, if you're just comping during this and someone else is playing the head, you can play that. You can continue to play that over the E flat and the D, D minor. Have you guys work out an arrangement on that one will be fine. Okay, going to the melody. It's kind of like a sweet picking thing, I guess you'd call it. So all down on that. Kind of almost, you know, overlap those a little bit. To me, it's easier to reach this A here than to, than to try to shift. So I prefer. Okay, so remember that the form is A A B A with an interlude, and the A section is Latin except for the last two bars, which are swing, and then the bridge is totally swung. swung. Okay, going on to the bridge, I play this little voicing for an A minor seven flat five. Go up here. It's like an enclosure, huh? Right in the melody, there's an enclosure. Similar look here in on the G minor seven flat five. Okay, and then another A section, and then the interlude. The interlude swung too. If you're playing that like with a horn or something, try to really listen to how they articulate and try to emulate that as best you can. So, maybe not, but kind of releasing those notes, huh? Okay, there you have it. Let's go on and look at the solo. Oh, one thing too, at the end of the interlude, 
there's a four bar break. That leads to the solo. Uh, so oftentimes the interlude will be played at the end of just each time the melody is played. Some groups will play it at the end of each solo. So if a solo takes two choruses, then they'll put the interlude in. So it can be kind of a confusing kind of thing. So you need to, oftentimes you need to work that out. I would say at a jam session, though, they would probably not play the uh, interlude except after the melody. Okay, so let's go on and look at the solo. Okay, so right after the interlude, there's a four bar break that you can play in. Now, if you're doing it just where uh, you're not doing the interlude between solos, then only the first solos will get to play in that inter interlude. It's just an F major 7 to a 2 5 in D minor. Okay, and that's what we're going to. Okay, now since the E flat is the tritone sub of A. Going to D minor, you're going to use the Lydian dominant on the E flat. So this is just a little Lydian dominant lick. And you're just going to use basically a uh, Dorian on the D minor. So basically, you're just going to. Targeting the chord tones, of course. So this starts on the fifth, fifth, sixth. There's a sharp eleven. Then just a little chromatic walk down from the seventh to the fifth. Then a, uh, an enclosure of the F. Then we're going back to the Lydian Dama. Okay. Kind of an enclosure there too. Triad there. Okay, stick with the Lydian dominant. Okay, so there we're using the F major scale, right? Really, really outlining the chord though of the E minor 7 flat 5. Then on the A7, you're going to use an altered scale. for both A sections. Now let's look at the B sections. So basically we're using using basically a B flat major scale starting on the 7th scale degree to give us the A minor 7 flat 5. So we're basically just playing uh, the 4th the, to the flat of 5th here. And then the 3rd. The then we're using the uh, on the D7, we're using the G melodic, G harmonic minor, starting on the fifth scale degree. Okay, then we're just doing a little octave thing here on the, which you use the G melodic minor. It's hard to play that really clean. Okay, here we go with a G. So, uh, since uh, B flat minor 
six is a G minor seven. This is just kind of a kind of out of that. Joe Pass does uses that lick, so same thing there. Uh, we're on using F harmonic minor, and then on the flat nine, seventh up to the ninth, back to the seventh. Okay, basically just uh, E minor seven arpeggio, E minor seven flat five arpeggio. Altered scale. Now remember the A altered scale and the E flat Lydian dominant are the same notes. Okay, and we're back to the A section. Okay, cool. Let's move on to look at the comping. Okay, instead of writing out the uh, exact comping I did, I went ahead and just kind of uh, gave some examples of some nice voicings that'll work for this. So the E flat seven. Remember, this is playing over a Lydian dominant, so you're going to want to use a sharp eleven if you uh, use extension. So you'll have, you could have this ninth chord. You could also have this sharp eleven like this. Okay, thirteen chord will work also. You could do the ninth and the sharp eleven like that. Okay. Just a straight ninth like that'll work. Okay, for the D minor seven. Uh, a lot of these chordal type chords work well in this tune, so. Okay. This D minor nine works nice too, especially if you're coming from this E flat nine. E minor seven flat five. Those will work. Remember that it's also the same as the G minor six, so that one works nice. You could just you, 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 you could go. Something like that, okay. On the A seven flat five. Remember this tritone sub here of just this E flat looks like an E flat seventh chord. really well because it just so you don't have a lot of time there okay okay looking at the bridge we have a minor seven flat five I like to use this one a lot with the fourth in here D7 flat nine that also has a uh, 13th in it there flat 13th okay because remember you're using the D The D, the G harmonic minor, G harmonic minor, starting on the fifth scale to read, which has a flat 13 and a flat 9. G minor 6. So this is kind of the same chord. Some people call this the magic chord, this major 7 with the flat 5, because it fits in so many places. It works real well for a G minor 6 there. That's about as low. It's a little muddy, but I think it works. Now, since just playing the G minor 6 here, I went ahead and put the major 7 in there also. Okay, here we're going to use the same chord I use on the A. As one of my choices, I guess. 
Okay. You know, up here it's good too. Also, you can use this one here. B minors. B flat minor 6 works right. Okay, C7 flat 9. Oh, you can use the diminished chord here too, huh? Oh, this is a nice one too. So a C6 9 works as an F6 with the uh, major 7th in it. Let's see what we got here. So it looks like a D flat 7th sharp 9, but it also works. Think of this 13th chord that you just put in the sh uh, sharp 11 right there. Or G7 with the sharp 11 right here. Okay, this kind of has the 4th in it. Okay, there you go. There's some some possible voicings you can use. Make sure to get the PDF. They're all they're all written out there real nice that, so you can uh, use all of those really well. And there you have it, Night Tunisia. A, a very fun standard to play but a little challenging, no doubt. Make sure, you know, if you're working on this, I'll have to also listen to the Dizzy Gillespie version. Uh, they do go pretty quick on it but, but uh, this tempo here that I did is pretty quick too so uh, have a lot of fun with it. Uh, just dig in and I'm sure you'll do great. So you have a great day. Thanks.